Hi, and welcome to another episode. This is Jennifer McGuire, and I hope that you're having a wonderful week. Well, today I am sharing how to create inside tunnel cards. Now, a few weeks ago, I shared how to do an inside shadow box where you opened up the card and there was a shadow box, and many people said they wanted to see more ideas like that. So today I'm sharing how to do that with a tunnel effect. So here are the examples. I think it's best to start by taking a look at them. When you open up the card, it pops up and you see these layers of dimension. It creates this little bit of a tunnel look. I like card designs like this because after you make the basic card, you can add any dies or images that you want. So it's a great way to put your supplies to use. I'll show how to do a side folding tunnel card and a top folding tunnel card like this one. Okay, so if you have not watched my shadow box card video yet, please do so first. It will really help uh, explain things as this is kind of a step up from that card design. And I'll link to it here so you can check it out if you haven't. Okay, let's start with the side folding card design first. For this, you need to start with two pieces cut to five and a half by eight and a half. If you take an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock and cut it in half, you'll have the two pieces you need. With one of them, you'll want to use a scoreboard to score right down the middle. I use a score pal, and I'll score right at four and a quarter. So basically, you're scoring right along the middle. So there's the four and a quarter mark. And then you'll fold right along that score line. Basically, all we've done is create a side folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch card, like many of us use for card making. Now from the back of this card, you want to cut off a half of an inch. So I just put it in my trimmer, cut off half an inch, and you'll see the back of the card is a little bit shorter than the front of the card. And we'll set this aside. Okay, with the other five and a half by eight and a half inch piece, we're going to do three score lines. The first one is at half an inch, which you can see here. The next one is at four and a quarter inches. And that one usually has a mark on your scoreboard because that's a common score line, four and a quarter. And the next one is at four and three quarters of an inch. So we've put three score lines into this paper. And if you watched my shadow box video, it's the same scoring and so far the same assembly. Okay, so now we're just going to reinforce each of those score lines. So you'll end up with this odd shaped piece that actually looks kind of like a box from the side. I do find it very helpful to use that scoring tool to reinforce those score lines. Okay, now for this card design, you need one more piece. This is five and a half by four and a quarter, and I just cut a little hair off the side and the top. So that ends up being just a slightly smaller than five and a half by four and a quarter. You'll want to score a quarter of an inch from one side, rotate it, and score a quarter of an inch from the other side. So we'll end up with a piece that has two little flaps scored on the side. It almost looks like a really low table. Okay, so now from this piece and the other one that has those three score lines in it, we need to die cut windows. So I'm going to take two circle dies, one that's bigger than the other. With the bigger die, I'll cut from the bigger piece. That's this one with the three score lines. On this panel right here, next to that half inch flap that's on the left, I'll place the large circle die towards the top center you can do any shape you want here. I'll run this through my die cut machine to create the large window on that panel. Now from that other smaller panel with the two little flaps on the side, I'll die cut the medium circle, the one that's slightly smaller. To make sure I get it centered, I'm lining up the score lines, lining across the top, so that I can use the die cut circle as a guide for where to put this die. Placing this die right in the center, I'll use some tape to hold it in place. Then I'll run this through the die cut machine to cut the slightly smaller uh, circle. So now you'll see when we put the smaller piece into the bigger piece, you have this fun tunnel effect. You can do multiple layers in here, but I'm going to show one for my first example. Now when you open the card, this is what will look like. You'll have this box kind of that we created here. So on this inside panel, I wanted to add some water effects like waves. You could do stamping, whatever you want here. I decided to use the My Favorite Things Mini Cloud Stencil, and I'm using it upside down so I can create the look of waves. 
I'm lightly applying Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide Ink with an ink blending tool just to create a soft look in the background. But again, you can do anything you want there. And since I have my ink and stencil out, I'll add some waves to that extra pool die cut circle that we had left over. This will piece will end up on the front of our card, so I'll set it aside for later. Okay, now it's time to put together the tunnel effect. So I'll take the smaller piece with the scored lines on the side, this little tiny little flaps, and I'll put adhesive on the top of those flaps. You could use a strong double-sided adhesive here or a strong liquid adhesive. From the flap on the right, I'll go ahead and remove the release paper. And we'll add this into the larger scored piece that has the stenciled waves. I'll place this right on top of the stenciled wave portion. And I'll put the edge where that adhesive is exposed right up to the crease of that other piece. So you'll see I'm putting them right up together. Make sure it's right up against that flap. Then I'll close the flap that's in my right hand onto the piece that's in my left hand. And I'll just press that down firmly. And you'll see what it kind of looks like a book when I hold it up. You'll see there's some pages starting to form in there. And we have our tunnel effect starting to take place. Before we finish gluing those pieces together, I think it's easiest to add it to the inside of the card. So here's the card we created in the beginning. Remember the back side has a half inch cut off of it. In the inside, I'm putting lots of double-sided tape. And then we'll take the portion where we stenciled or stamped or whatever you want to do and glue that right into there, making sure it meets up with the crease and the card. So we'll press that down firmly and you'll see we're starting to take shape here. Only two more steps. The first is to remove the release paper from that other small flap. And you'll just want to make sure that the, the tape is exposed up. So it's facing up, you can see it's sticky there. Lay it down flat. Then take this last flap and close it right onto it. And you'll see the edge of that flap meets up with the crease on your note card. Okay, so we're getting there one more thing. We just need to put some double-sided tape on that little half inch flap. I put two strips on this because I really wanna make sure that it sticks nicely to the front of our card. Again, you can use liquid adhesive, but I find it tricky to wait for it to dry. So double-sided tape is really effective. All we have to do here is place it down. Just make sure that the adhesive is faced up. Place it down, meets up with the crease of the card, and then close the card shut. Now the first time you open it, it might look a little wonky. That's okay. Notice that it is nice and flat. What I like to do is work all of the creases, just keep opening and closing it a lot until it starts to work nicely. And you'll find that it flattens nicely for an envelope, and then when you open it, it pops up giving you this really cool tunnel effect. So in my shadow box video, you just had one layer that popped up. This has two. Now the images on this card are from the My Favorite Things Gil Friends stamp set. I just thought these were absolutely adorable and wanted to use them. However, you could use any stamped images you want. I also used these greenery die cuts from My Favorite Things. I cut them from green cardstock and add a little shading to them with green Copic markers. I also colored the little fish with Copic markers and cut them out by hand, but you could definitely use the coordinating dies if you prefer. This is the fun part. All you have to do is glue all of your little images or die cuts onto the layers. You'll wanna glue some on the top, some on the second layer, and then some on the inside. That way you create a fun tunnel effect with lots of shadows and tons of dimension. And since this is just paper that I'm layering in here, you end up with a card that really doesn't have that much bulk. If you want to add embellishments, keep in mind that it might kind of push through to the front of the card and kind of make an impression. So I like to really just stick to basics on the inside. On the front of the card, I used that stenciled circle that we created, added two die cut greeneries, a little fish, and the white heat embossed sentiment that says, hello, Gail friend. I also added a few tiny, tiny flat sequins here and there for bubbles. I did the same on the inside, added those little flat sequins, added lots of little fish and greenery, and then I white heat embossed the message, thank you. Instead of thank you, it says thank you, and I thought that was perfect for the inside. So basically this card design is just like the shadow box one, but we added that one piece in there, that one extra layer 
to create even more dimension in that tunnel effect. Now my next example, I'm not going to show you all of the steps, but I wanted to mention that you can actually add two layers in there if you want to. So remember the piece that we created with the two tiny flaps on the side? You would end up making two pieces like that, both with die cut windows, and put both inside of the shadow box. You would just want to make sure that you cut the flaps on the side to be very, very small so that there's room when you assemble the card. So here you can see the card before I add the images. There are two layers in there, one with a medium rectangle and one with a small rectangle. And then I have clouds stenciled behind that. But you can see that they pop up to create a really fun tunnel effect. Now I had actually filmed the process of this card, but the video is way too long, so I left it out. If you guys think you wanna see a video showing how to add the two layers, I could add it, but it's just like the last one, and you just add one more layer in there. Okay, so for the die cuts on this one, I use the My Favorite Things Birds of a Feather die set. This die cuts all these birds, these little flowers and greenery, they're so much fun. I die cut them from white cardstock, a bunch of images, and then I just added si simple coloring to it with Copic markers. You could use an ink and ink blending tool, you could use regular markers, watercolor, whatever you want. You could even use colored cardstock. I'll be honest, I love die sets like this that have lots of little pieces. So you can kind of paper piece a little bird together. You have the body, the wings, the feet, the beak. I think it's so much fun to put those together. So now that I have a bunch assembled, it's time to glue these into the tunnel. Again, you want to make sure that you glue some onto each layer. You can even glue on the top and the bottom or the back side of each layer, and you create a ton of fun dimension. So you'll see I have one leaf glued on the inside, one on the first layer, a flower on the second layer, and then I can add some leaves to the first layer. Now if you are like me and like to die cut or color extra images and you have like a bowl full of extra images sitting around, you could put together a dimensional card like this and just add those images to it. It's a great way to use up any little extra stamped images or die cuts you may have. For the sentiment, I use the My Favorite Things Two Can Do It stamp set. This has some really cute birds that would be fun for this style of card, but I just use the sentiments. So I have that extra rectangle that I had from die cutting the windows for the tunnel card, and I put some stenciled clouds on it. Then I stamped Happy Bird Day from the Two Can set. I also used some extra images. I had arranged them on the piece and taken a picture with my phone. And now I'm using some strong liquid adhesive to assemble them on this rectangle. I like to use the leftover piece that we have die cut when we created the window for the tunnel. I like to use that on the front of the card. It ties it all together nicely. So I add this to the front of the card. On the inside, I added a little sentiment strip that says, I love you. And I actually added it by putting glue on the top edge and tucking it behind one of the layers. So the sentiment actually pops up too. You can see the card is flat when it's closed. And when you open it up, you have this incredible tunnel effect. Again, this has two layers of tunneling, but if you want to save time, you could just do one layer as I showed you on the last example. I also added a few little bits of details with a white gel pen here and there, and then added a little black Nuvo drop dot to the eye on the front. But really, there's no added dim uh, dimension with embellishments on this one, so that it ends up nice and flat. Okay, my third example shows how to do this pop-up tunnel effect with a top folding card. So I'm starting with two pieces that are cut to four and a quarter by 11 inches. You can make these by taking a eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock and cutting it right down the center. For one of the pieces, I'll score at five and a half. This is actually halfway across the piece. So you're just folding or doing a score line right at the center. We'll fold it over, use our bone folder to crease it. And what we end up with is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card, which I always use in my videos. From the back side of this, I'll cut off half inch, just like we did on our first example. So the back of the card is a half inch shorter. We'll set this one aside and take the other four and a quarter by 11 inch piece. And we're going to do three score lines again. The first one's at a half an inch. So you can see on my score buddy there, the half inch mark. 
the next score line is at five and a half, which is the halfway point. So I'll do score line at five and a half. And then the final score line is at six inches. These are the same score locations that we do when we're creating the shadow box card that's top folding, like I showed in the other video. So I'll crease each of the score lines. By the way, I recommend a heavyweight cardstock for the outside note card for sure. For the inside pieces, you could use a lighter weight cardstock or heavyweight. It really doesn't matter. Next, you'll need one piece that's cut to be slightly smaller, just a hair smaller than four and a quarter by five and a half inches. On this one, we'll again do a quarter inch score line from both ends. So there's one on this end, rotate it, and then a quarter inch from the edge on the other end. We'll reinforce each of those score lines and we have our pieces ready. I'm using an older die set from My Favorite Things that's a cross stitch circles. From the bigger scored piece, I'll die cut the bigger circle. And from the smaller scored piece, I'll die cut the medium sized circle. So I line it up right behind our bigger piece just to make sure I get my circle centered. Then I'll place the medium circle die right in the center, tape that in place and die cut it. If I wanted to, I could do another piece that's small and do a smaller circle on that so we had two layers. But for this example, I'm just sticking with one layer in there. Okay, now it's time to decorate what will be inside of that tunnel effect. So I'm masking this off. And remember last time we stenciled in this area, well this time I'm going to heat emboss. I'm using the My Favorite Things Itsy Bitsy Polka Dot stamp set, which I've used in a lot of videos. I've inked it up with Versamark ink. I'm laying that panel right onto it. And then I'll add clear embossing powder and heat set it. I just want a kind of a tone on tone look, nothing too distracting. You could also use white pigment hair ink here if you wanted to, just for that little pattern on the inside. When this is closed, you'll be able to see those polka dots through the window. So let's assemble this. I'm going to do it just like I did on the first example. It's the same process. This time I'll change up the steps a little bit so it's a variation. Either method works. I'm putting the double-sided tape on both of those tiny little flaps on this piece. I'll put this piece right on top of that stamped area. I have my adhesive facing up and I'll put that little flap right up against the score line or the crease of this bigger piece. I'll then lay this down onto it to make sure that it, the adhesive catches to it. And now I'm going to close the other exposed adhesive end, the other little flap. So I'll take this and I'll lay it down. See, I'm laying it along that crease and those edges line up over there. Then I'll take the flap and close it again at the other crease. So now when I close it, we have our pop-up effect that will go inside of our card. So again, you're gonna end up with that extra layer on the inside. Otherwise, it's the same as the shadow box card I showed you in the other video. Okay, now we can add the tunnel effect inside of our note card. Remember, this is the note card where we cut a half inch off the back. In the inside of the card, I'm putting strong double-sided adhesive, and then we can add the tunnel effect to this. So I'm taking our tunnel piece over there on the right, laying the stamped part right into the inside, put the edge of that up to the crease of the card, and we only have one more step. I'm putting double-sided tape on that half-inch flap. You may notice there's a sentiment that I white heat embossed on there. Pretend it's not there. I changed my mind. I was going to do a cat card, but I changed my mind and I, I'll cover it up, but I'll show you the stamp set later. Okay, so now that adhesive is facing up, I press the card down. The edge of this will match up with the crease of the note card, and I fold the note, note card closed, and there we have our top folding tunnel card inside. So I just want to reinforce all of the folds. So I just press closed and press it open and keep doing that until all the uh, folds open and close nicely. Okay, so now it's time to add the little pieces to this. This time I decided to use the candles from the My Favorite Things Happy Birthday Candle Die Set. I just die cut from white cardstock instead of having to find all different colors of cardstock. And I just colored it with Copic markers. I needed a little flame, so I cut super thin pieces of white cardstock or to actually to create the wicks. And I glued that to the back of the candles. And then I glued the flames onto the wick and trimmed off the excess. 
So that's how I formed each of the candles. It didn't take very long and I made a bunch of them. Now for the inside, I glued a lot of candles in here. Some on that top layer like you see here. Some on the inside, so right in the back of the card where the polka dots are. And then some on that layer that's in between. And by having some glue to each of those layers, you get a really cool dimensional effect when you open it up, this really cool tunnel look. So it takes a little bit of time to add those little candles, but it's definitely worth it. For the front of the card, I used one of my extra die cut uh, craft colored circles and added three candles to that, along with the happy birthday sentiment strips. And I just glued those right on top. I didn't use any foam tape or dimensional adhesive for this because I didn't want to add any bulk to the card design. So this gets glued right onto the front towards the bottom. I also white heat embossed a sentiment strip to glue over the one that I messed up when I changed my mind. So I glued that in right over the top so the sentiment continues on the inside. The birthday sentiments are from this My Favorite Things Make a Wish stamp set. I really like this set. It has lots of great celebration sentiments. And if you were curious where that cat sentiment came from, it was this My Favorite Things Cute Cat Stamp Set. It's a smaller set, so it's got a great price point. In these cards, if you want to write a personal message, I would do so in the top part of it when you open it. So here's the final card. I added a little bit of shimmer to the flames using my Spectrum Noir shimmer pen. And check out all that dimension that you get with those candles that pop up. This would be fun to do with different Christmas cards. You really could use this for any occasion. So if you've tried the shadow box card and you want to step it up to create that tunnel effect, I hope you'll try this technique. It really is fun to do. Once you do it once, it really is easy to do. So if you're interested in the supplies for these products, I have them linked in the YouTube description below. I also have more photos and information over on my blog. In the middle are two other videos. One of them is that shadow box card, and another is another pop-up card that I think you might like. Thanks for spending time with me today. Please hit subscribe if you haven't done so. Also, you can hit the share button below if you want to share this with a friend. I'll see you again soon, and have a great week.